Bureau is proud to present this amazing state tournament and celebrate the accomplishments of Iowa's student athletes. To the Iowa Farm Bureau, this is more than just a sport. It's hometown pride, it's hopes and dreams, it's our future leaders, it's a reason to do more and be more. And it's that farm strong spirit that can only be found in Iowa. Congratulations to the student athletes and coaches on a successful year. And remember, today's successes are just the beginning of tomorrow's achievements. Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big balls, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small, we host them all. That old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah. You come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are silent. Let's go! At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Um, um, Frank, Frank, when you think fairway, you think fresh. Is that the winning culture you've tried to create? Penelope Pineapple, what an unbelievable produce performance. How does your team stay so fresh? Sunkissed Orange, is it true fairway has offered the freshest produce in town since 1938? What can we say? Our produce is so fresh, we're speechless. Good afternoon and welcome to Wells Fargo Arena in downtown Des Moines, home of the Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by Iowa Farm Bureau. Alongside Laura Leonard, I'm Trent Condon. Glad to have you aboard with this one and we'll have a big matchup here. The number two seed, Davenport North, the Wildcats, 22-2 this season against seventh seeded Cedar Falls, the Tigers, 22-1. Right here on the Girls Union Network, powered by Mid-American Energy Company. Well, Laura, it is the number two seed versus the number seven but definitely does not have that feeling here today because of an injury that has impacted Davenport West. Get here to the state tournament, but certainly not at full strength. Yeah, you know, it, Journey Houston is out or injured her knee, and, and so that takes a little bit of uh, the air out of the bubble, when you. but you still have gotten to state. You're playing for a title, and so you have to put that aside. They've done pretty well without her. They've won games going to step up in competition a little bit today. We'll talk a little bit more about what it's going to take for them to get this matchup on the other side. Cedar Falls comes in with a sterling 22-1 record. Now, we're both Central Iowa people. We know the power of the CIML, but they've won a lot of big games along the way to get to 22-1. Yeah, they have. I mean, they've had a tough road to go through and tough competition over on the eastern side of the state. And you know when you get to state, you're seeing somebody from that side uh, of the state, but Everything goes out the window when you step foot on the floor here at Wells Fargo. Cedar Rapids Prairie is who they knocked off in the regional championship in region number seven. For on the other side, Davenport West, they had to get through two Cedar Rapids schools to get here, including Washington in that championship game. Elite defense, we're going to talk a little bit more about the matchup, what it's going to take on both sides to walk away with a victory. When we come back, we'll dive deeper into today's game with our seeds for success presented by Channel Seeds. Plus, we'll have your starting lineups as we get set for tip-off. You're watching the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Digital Network, powered by Mid-American Energy.
This is our son, Sebastian. In 2021, he took half a pill he didn't know was counterfeit. That tiny pill contained enough fentanyl to kill him almost instantly. Kids buy them on social media and share them with their friends, not realizing how dangerous they are. Please talk to your kids about not taking anything that's not directly prescribed to them. Our child will never get to grow up, but we want yours to be able to. In Iowa, we all play by the same rules. Hard work pays off, practice makes perfect, success is something you earn, and teamwork helps us all be winners. The Iowa Pork Producers Association is proud to support statewide high school athletics. Because on our team and on yours, what we bring to the table is what brings us all together. Learn more about our commitment to Iowa at iowapork.org. When you choose Delta Dental of Iowa, you set a chain of good in motion because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you get more than great dental and vision insurance. You make a difference for others. Choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Welcome back to Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines, as we get set for this quarterfinal round matchup between number two seed Davenport North and seven seeded Cedar Falls. Trent Condon, Lauren Leonard back with you. And Laura, uh, looking at this matchup here, let's get into our Channel Seeds, Seeds for Success. The Enhanced Channel Seed brand is here for you to help farmers like you up your game and rise to the challenge. Learn more at channel.com slash rise. Well, for Cedar Falls, what they want to do is dictate the tempo. They're a team that likes to get up and down the floor. They want to push, they want to run and gun, they will shoot out of transition, and they have to hustle and get to every 50-50 ball. They cannot stand back, they've got to get on the floor and win those 50-50 battles. And then for Devonport North, good communication on both offense and defense. You have to know where one another are offensively. Defensively, you have to talk, you have to be aware of where Knutson is all the time, and then you have to limit the fouls. They have a short bench. They can't afford to get into foul trouble. Two elite defensive teams should be a good one here in the quarterfinals. Once again, today's Seeds for Success were brought to you by Channel. The Enhanced Channel Seed brand is here to help farmers like you up your game and rise to the challenge. Learn more at channel.com slash rise. We'll come back on the other side, bring you the starting lineups for this quarterfinal round matchup. Trent Cotton alongside Laura Leonard with you here for the quarterfinal round as we come back. You're listening to the state tournament on the Girls Union Network powered by MidAmerican Energy. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Trent Cotton, Laura Leonard back with you at Wells Fargo Arena as we get ready for the quarterfinal round matchup number three of the day. 
earlier today. Winners from Johnston and from Waukee. It'll be a purple semifinal in the top half of the bracket. Winner this one will move on in the bottom side of the bracket to the semifinal. That'll be played at 11.45 on Thursday morning. Uh, one more quarterfinal to go in Class 5A, starting with the big schools as we get ready for the announcements of the lineups, including the starters down on the floor here in this quarterfinal between Davenport North and Cedar Falls. Good afternoon, basketball fans, and welcome to today's 2024 Girls State Basketball 5A quarterfinal matchup featuring the Cedar Falls Tigers and the Davenport North Wildcats. Fans, tradition is an important part of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union's storied history. Because our past is an integral part of what we do today, we ask that everyone in attendance please join in a round of applause to show our appreciation to all the women who have participated in high school athletics in Iowa. Once an Iowa girl, always an Iowa girl. Fans at this time, the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union and the Iowa Farm Bureau would like to recognize the outstanding sportsmanship shown by Cedar Falls High School and Davenport North High School. In recognition of the importance of good sportsmanship, each state qualifying school was asked to nominate a spectator who represents their school and community in a sportsmanlike manner. Claire Pellet from Atlantic High School, a member of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Student Athlete Advisory Committee, will present each nominee with a certificate of recognition and a $250 check payable to their school scholarship fund. Please join us in honoring these individuals whose decorum and respect for others serves as a model for all spectators attending interscholastic events. From Cedar Falls High School, Mark Urbanic. And from Davenport North High School, Vernon Reed. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union promotes good sportsmanship by participants, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants, officials, and spectators in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, sexist, or abusive comments, or intimidating actions directed at officials, participants, coaches, team representatives, or event personnel will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal. We thank you for your cooperation and invite you to just enjoy the game. Fans, it's now time to introduce the players in today's 5A quarterfinal matchup. First of all, here are your non-starters for the Cedar Falls Tigers. Number one, Mackenzie Sagers. Number two, Mackenzie Urbanic. Number five, Maddie Deacon. Number 10, Sophie Stanick. Number 11, Jordan Oakland. Number 13, Lakin Petrie. Number 14, Taylor Vore. Number 15, Emma Jacobs. Number 20, Kira Gleason. And number 51, Avery Bear. Your assistant coaches, Derek Gerling, Ryan Hannum. Heidi Anderson, and Maddie Van Dyke. And now let's meet the non-starters and assistant coaches for the Davenport North Wildcats. Number three, Sierra McMath. Number 10, Gabby Leibold. Number 14, Julissa Walker. Number 23, Tayana Pendleton. And number 24, Dolores Overtense. Your assistant coaches, Adam Creighton. 
David Campbell, and Katie Hatcher. And now, here are your starters for today's 5A semifinal. For Cedar Falls, at guard, a 5'6 junior number three, Gabby Hanks. For Davenport North at guard, a six-foot junior number one, Divine Burridge. For the Tigers at guard, a 5'10 senior number four, Grace Knudsen. At guard for the Wildcats, a 5'6 junior number two, Damia Clark. For Cedar Falls at guard, a 5'10 sophomore, number 12, Karis Finley. For Davenport North at guard, a 5'8 junior, number 11, Maya Arnold. For the Tigers at forward, a 5'11 senior, number 21, Aria Burks. At forward, for the Wildcats, a 5'10 senior, number 13, Kyra Taylor. And at forward, for the Tigers, a 6'1 junior, number 23, Grace Hannum. And at forward, for the Wildcats, a 5'10 senior, number 15, Michaela Farnham. Head coach for the Tigers, Greg Groen, and for the Wildcats, Paul Rucker. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce your officials today for this 5A semifinal. Blake Reinke, Kurt Strouth, Brett Johnson, and your auxiliary official, Brent Behrens. All right, it's time for State Tournament Basketball. Before we begin today's game, we'd like to once again thank Iowa Farm Bureau, pro, proud title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union for their support. The Iowa Farm Bureau has an office located in your county across Iowa. And we'd like to thank the offices listed on your screen for their support of the two teams playing in the game today. Thank you, Iowa Farm Bureau, for supporting the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union and the Iowa Girl. Here we go, Laura. It's always a great, uh, great day to get things started here on Monday of the Girls State Tournament. And a beautiful new floor as you can see the overhead shot, the outline of the state in the old school script. Love the look of it. Yeah, I love it. It looks great. And uh, I know the crowds have been great so far. These two crowds are fired up. You can hear them. Burridge wins the opening tap in Davenport North. We'll take the opening possession north the Wildcats, 22 and two on the season. As the number two seed, they're wearing the home white uniforms with the blue numbers and the gold trim. Look at inside, cut, ball deflected away. Stick back, not there. Deflected long into the hands of Finley and Cedar Falls will get their first opportunity. You can see right away, Cedar Falls going to double team Burridge out on the corner. Finley has it on the right wing. Returns up top for Knutson. Knutson leads the team over 22 per contest this season. Finley on the drive. Gets baseline. Oh, great pass inside. Flipped it up with the left handed in. Burks, our first score of the day. Get the dribble penetration, draw the defense, thread the needle for a good pass and an easy two. Looking to answer with a three on the other end. That one off the backboard, deflecting long and into the hands of Burks. Hot start for Burks, the senior for Cedar Falls. 2 0 lead. Knutson, deep three, ring it up. Grace Knutson from downtown. Held number one in 5A in scoring. Knutson, you talked about her 22 points a game. That's where she does most of her damage is from deep. That ball deflected. Hanks had a foot on the sideline. It'll be back to Davenport North, but Hanks, not a big score, but a good defender, nearly at two steals per contest. Yeah, she's out there at top of that defense. You can see the quick hands, anticipation, getting out in the passing lanes. And I think you're going to continue to see Cedar Falls try to push north out further and further, make them set their offense way out, not let them get in too deep. Cedar Falls also a very tall team. Hanks at five foot six, the shortest player. But you go five times, five ten, five ten, five eleven, six one. 
That's some height out there. That is, and, and you're going to find matchup problems on both sides, defensively and offensively, and see if Cedar Falls tries to take advantage of that. But, you know, quickness with North, they have a lot of quickness, and that's the power and the athletic ability of Burridge and what she can do, and that's why a lot of college coaches are looking at her. Able to absorb the contact and then the strength while you're in the air to be able to finish that shot off the window, got the strength to get it up there and a chance at a three-point play. And, you know, going from a season where you're playing a lot of two-player game with her in Houston, it's a big change knowing that all the attention really is going to be on her. Yeah, and you have to make those adjustments, and they've had a few games to be able to try to adjust, but you also have to have some of your other teammates step up and pick up some of those points that are out of the lineup. Houston was averaging close to 19 points a game. Reach across the timeline by Burridge, and that's one thing they can't afford. Not a lot of depth now on top of it, and Burridge have to have her on the floor. You have to have her on the floor. She has to be smart, and I know she's aggressive defensively, wants to try to get some steals, but you have to be smart. You don't want to pick up another one here right away. Finley brings it across the timeline for the Tigers, leading 5-3, gets it into the high post. Burks sees pressure deflected, stolen away. Here comes North, left to right across your viewing screen here today. Burridge left out. On the left wing, crosses over a dribble. Double team comes at the elbow, deflected. Oh, great pass inside, and the finish. A beauty as she found Taylor. What great vision, didn't panic. Got that ball taken away from her, but throws a dart through the middle. Cedar Falls answer with Finley with the three. Her older sister playing at UNI, and boy, you see a lot of her sister in her game already. Absolutely, and uh, probably a, a lot of opportunity to play against one another mm -hmm. and uh, some coaching opportunities for her older sister. 8-5 lead, Burridge, three again. She's got six, tied up at eight. You know, just think of how tough this team would be if they had Houston. I mean, you've already seen the ability of Burridge and what she can do. You have that one-two punch. They're pretty tough to stop. First substitution of the game. Substitutions brought to you by IMT Insurance. Learn how you can be worry-free with IMT at imtins.com. Finley takes the inbound, ch chucks up another three. That one off the back iron. Fight for the rebound inside. Stick back, not there. Rebounded by North. Burridge on the push. End to end. Oh, another great pass inside. Reverse layup just off the rim by Taylor. Oh, what a great effort by Taylor. And again, another great pass, just kind of leading her to the rim and throwing her open, if you will, to get to the other side of the rim. Couldn't convert it. Right for the ball near midcourt. Loose still. And into the hands of Hannah. She'll hand and into the corner. Around the perimeter now with 30 on the shot clock. Here, number two of the shot clock here in the state. A welcome change, certainly, from this broadcaster. Totally agree. Finley on the baseline drive, goes up, fouled on her way up. Can't let her get baseline there, Laura. No, not at all. I, anytime, and especially if you don't have any help on the backside, you got to come over and, and uh, drop off your player and help out on the baseline side. That did not happen. Two free throws coming now for Karis Finley, the sophomore. 71% foul shooter on the air coming in and calmly hits the first and gives Cedar Falls the lead back. See the help defense just a tick late there getting over. And leads to two free throws. Rolls in the second. And a two point lead. Timeout on the floor. 30 second timeout. Level up your game at Central College. More than half of Central students participate in intercollegiate athletics because Central allows you to pursue your passions and be more than a spectator. It's the best decision ever. Apply at central.edu. Quick start here, and after that 4 nothing spurt to begin the game, Burridge really bring the team back for North. Yeah, she's shown a lot of her skills so far, that she can shoot the basketball from deep, she can go in and absorb contact, knock down shots, and then showing how she can throw out assists. I mean, she's finding her teammates being able to get them in the open spot, get them in the right spot so they can score. North gets the basketball. North using an early timeout here, getting everything settled. Just over four and a half to play in the first quarter. A 10-8 lead for Cedar Falls. On the right wing is Farnham. 
on the drive. She's fouled on her way up and a couple of free throws for the senior, Michaela Farnham. Farnham, good shooter from the outside. 41 threes tied for the team lead this season, shooting 73% from the free throw line. When Hannum was in there, she's their rim protector and one of the leaders in the state in four and in 5A, four blocks a game. And that's what she does. She's not a huge score for them, but she's their rebounder and their shot blocker. Both free throws find its way home. Hannum, dad's on the bench over there as an assistant. Ryan, former Seattle Seahawk, UNI Panther. And a basketball player that uh, gave me the business a time or two back in the hardwood. I was going to say, you probably <laughs> took him to the rim many, many times, uh, right? If it did, it was going to end up just like his daughter Grace <laughs> is going right back at me. Jump ball at midcourt with 4.10 to play. Alternating possession arrow keeps it with Cedar Falls. CF 22-1 this season, 22-2 for Davenport North. Both of those losses, though, came early in the season against out-of-state competition. Yeah, North undefeated in the Mississippi Athletic Conference for the first time since 2017, so a really good run for them. Finley in the high post, threw it up, deflected out of bounds from Burridge as she helps Finley back to her feet. Good sportsmanship there, love to see that. See if that's the case in the fourth quarter, if this right. one's still tight. If this one's still <laughs> tight, you don't know. Hanks inbounds and gets it to Finley on the left wing. Baseline drive again by Finley. Goes up too strong on the attempt. And rebounded by Burridge. She wants to push it ahead. Does quickly on the spin. Taylor inside with the left hand. No, but a foul. That will be the third team foul whistled against Cedar Falls as they got Hanks inside. You know, North is doing a really good job of seeing the interior from the perimeter. They're making really good passes, and everybody seems to be moving, and I know this is kind of a positionless offense of what North runs. Everybody's cutting, running, looking to the opening, and uh, teammates are finding one another. Maya Taylor, two for two at the free throw line, and Davenport North races out now to a 12-10 lead, trailed by five early on here. Looking for the cutter, tried to get it to Hannum. Tried to save it, but it's taken away. Burridge on the push. Two on three, goes up. Too strong on the layup attempt. Finley up with the rebound for Cedar Falls. Boy, good take, good idea. Defense got back in transition and stood straight up and down vertical. I think that kind of caused a little doubt in Burridge's mind when she went up, wanted to avoid that contact, didn't want to get that second foul. Taylor gets the foul that's her second. Now we'll see Davenport North what they're going to do off the bench. The leading score available is McMath, who averages four per contest. First free throw good from Finley. And it will be McMath that will come into the game. Substitutions brought to you by IMT Insurance. Learn how you can be worry-free with IMT at imtins.com. One out of two, splitting the pair. North maintains the lead 12-11 with 3.15 left. Into the corner, it's Farnham for Burridge right wing. Burridge crosses over, dribble, gets into the paint. Gets it back from 18. Calm possession here. Waiting for something, a great crossover. And the stick in your eye, wow. That, that is so good. Uh, you just don't see a lot of players with that kind of quickness and that ball handling to make that quick crossover dribble and then rise up and knock down a jumper. Pressure up front into the game, Stanek. And him back to Stanek, the runner off the glass and in. A give and go and an injury down on the floor. Saw the collision, McMath just into the game. And wasn't able to see exactly what happened there. But she is definitely in some pain as the staff comes out and takes a look at McMath. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, traffic, everybody going up. If that ball came off the rim, getting in position for the rebound, and she just went down to the ground in a heap. And they're looking at the left leg, it appears, of McMath, stretching out her knee, and as we know in this sport, uh, that is always a scary one. She pounds the floor in frustration. Boy, and for a team that is short as far as bench players go, that's another blow to them. Yeah, after that, it's probably the senior Gabby Leibold that would be next up off the bench as the two fouls already on Taylor. 
by not putting any weight on the left leg as she's gonna make her way over to the bench. This Sierra McMath, the sophomore five foot 10 guard, that just come into the game. And it will be Gabby Leibold that will come in the senior. So really stretching the depth here as Leibold comes in and they're gonna check on her down at the end of the bench. Back to live action with 2.39 to play in the first. Davenport North, a 14-13 lead over Cedar Falls. And that's Class 5A quarterfinal. Trent Condon alongside Laura Leonard. Thanks for joining us here this afternoon. You know, and with uh, McMath going down, that's uh, going to limit what they can do defensively as well. You can't be as aggressive as what you normally would be because you're down in numbers now and uh, can't afford to get into that foul trouble. 14 foul against Cedar Falls there. You saw right away when Burridge took the drive, there were four defenders just surrounding her. Well, that's what you have to do. I mean, but she's so good at passing the basketball. You're gambling if you converge on her with all four, she was going to find an open player. Jumper from Farnham left short, and the rebound to Cedar Falls. Tigers trail it by one. Just over two minutes to play first. Finley thought about, thought about the step back three. Instead, she'll get it to the left side. Here's a drive. Runner. Oh, just rolled off there, and Burridge goes up high for the rebound. Stanek hit a runner earlier, couldn't get that one in. Burridge, double team comes up front, drops it inside, good pass again. Didn't have the angle, but threw it away. Finley with the steal. Arnold just didn't know what to do with the basketball, wanted to get back out and get set up again. Three-pointer off the mark, and the rebound into the hands of North and Arnold. Burridge on the push. That number's four on three. Flips it to the corner, four three, side, backboard, no good. Clark drops her head in frustration on that one. Here's Knutson end to end with the left hand, great finish. Boy, what a great job of just going one way and then coming back and blowing by the defense the other way, finishing with the left hand. Cedar Falls regains the lead, 15-14, just over a minute left in the first quarter. Leibold. Goes inside, inside out action. Up front, Burridge thought about the three. Now will step into one, top of the key. Back rimming no good, and Finley rebounds. Can get a two for one if they go quick, Knudsen. She'll try to go quick. Side rimming no, and Burridge another rebound. And they aren't afraid to do that. I mean, they are, she's a great shooter, she's got that range. And instead of setting up, she's got that distance and that kind of uh, Opening, she's going to pull the trigger. Came in with 98 three-pointers on the season, shooting 39% from behind the arc. 15 on the shot clock, 25 on the game clock. Left wing, here's another three. That one in and out no good from Clark. Rebounded by Hannah. Knutson across the timeline. Finley in the corner. She drives baseline again, goes up with the right hand this time and finishes. Cedar falls by three, final five seconds. Burridge, try to hustle it across, get a shot off at the horn. The runner deflected, and that's how the first quarter will come to a close. Cedar Falls, a 17-14 lead over Davenport North in this Class 5A quarterfinal. We continue, you're watching Girls State Basketball, presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network, powered by Mid-American Energy. We're back with more in a moment. Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big ballers, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small, we host them all. And that old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah, when you come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are silent. Let's go! Trent Condon, Laura Leonard back with you as we get ready for the start of the second quarter. 17-14 lead for Cedar Falls. Level up your game 
at Central College. More than half of Central students participate in college athletics because Central allows you to pursue your passions and be more than a spectator. It's the best decision ever. Apply at central.edu. Good pace here, Laura. Fun first quarter. Yeah, it really has been a, a good back and forth game and uh, a lot of action. And right now, you know, defenses aren't being able to get set. It's a lot of offense for both of these teams. Ball deflected out. It's going to stay with North. Finley gets the deflection. And they've thrown a bunch of different defenders at Burridge. And I think you have to. I think you have to change it up and try to keep her off balance. You're going to see a lot of different things. Zone, we saw Knutson guarding her man-to-man. -man. So you're going to see a lot of different things where they converge, as you just saw, making her give up the ball. Reset with 15 on the shot clock. And we go to Clark on the right wing. To the left side, and Taylor. Taylor, a couple of dribbles, picks it up. Leaning off of Arnold, letting her have it. Try to get the cutter deflected out with three on the shot clock. This is one where you got your set play late in the shot clock situation. As Davenport North is going to stack up three players on the left. Drop it all the way back to Taylor. And there's a shot clock violation. I know you have your set inbounds plays as you were talking about. I'm kind of surprised that Burridge was taking it out with only three seconds mm -hmm. left. You'd want the ball in her hands with little time left on the shot clock. Burridge has the defensive canutes in here as we begin the second quarter. CF up by three, Finley. Inside, here's another drive and a finish high off the glass. Boy, Stanek has come in. Had some instant offense like Vinnie Johnson, the I'll microwave. i tell you, she's little and she got in there and all of a sudden saw the defense come over, threw it high off the glass and got it to go. She likes that runner in there. She's hit a couple of them. Also has been able to knock down threes, 12 off the bench. And we got a timeout on the floor, 30-second timeout as we will keep it right here. 19-14 is the lead. And uh, nice little spurt here from Cedar Falls. Yeah, kind of got settled down in that first quarter during that timeout between quarters. Came out, ran a couple of set plays, got some things going, got momentum back to their side, got some defensive stops. Well, up your game at Central College, more than half of Central's students participate in intercollegiate athletics because Central allows you to pursue your passions and be more than a spectator. It's the best decision to ever apply at central.edu. Well, Burridge, you obviously got to run a lot of things through her. We've seen she's so unselfish, though. It's almost that time where you say it's time to be a little bit more selfish. And I think as this game goes on, and depending on the score, how tight it is, I think you're going to see her become a little more selfish and try to take things into her own hands. But uh, she's showing that she is a complete player, that she is not afraid to dish it off. That's a tough shot by Knudsen. Foot inside the line, but coming off the screen there, defender right with her, able to hit it from 18. Yeah, doing a good job coming off the bounce and getting inside, rising up, knocking it down. Anna this time had the defensive Burridge. The drive attempt off the side iron, no good from Taylor, and the rebound to Finley. Pushes ahead to Knudsen. Knudsen thought about pulling up from the wing. Now drives runner before the shot on the floor. They're going to get Burridge, and that will be her second. 6.15 to play in the second quarter. Now see if they change up defensively, maybe go to a zone or put her on somebody else where she's not going to be in as much of the action where she's guarding Knudsen. They're going to try to get the ball in Knudsen's hands even more now that she's got two fouls and let her try to attack. Inbound to Hannum. Traps it to the right side and Burks now inside in the finish. Doing it in a myriad of different ways. Well, and they got a nice back screen to spring Knutson loose, and it was a good pass, nice little diagonal pass. Seeing the three-pointer, the long jumper there inside. Big answer, though. Needed that by Farnham. Yeah, they certainly did need that, and they need a few other people to step up and start knocking down some shots. Finley can't talk down the three-pointer. And Farnham with the rebound. She pushes it forward for Davenport North. And a walk. Shuffle the feet before she got going. Turnover by Taylor. Gives it right back to CF. 
I think they would like to do that, though. Push tempo a little bit, see if they can get the running game going. Sometimes you get a little ahead of yourself. Hanks will inbound for Cedar Falls. Tigers lead up by six with 5.35 left in the second quarter. Adam left side gets it for Hanks. Hanks to Knutson. Screen and roll. Knutson turns the corner, pulls up, left it short. Burridge up for the rebound. Quickly ahead to Taylor. Taylor all the way through, scooped it up. Front rim no good, and the rebound to Hanks. Like the idea, just maybe didn't have the footwork down right to get that step around the defense. There's Finley against the double team. She's fouled on her way up, and he'll get two more free throws. Cedar Falls shooting 47% from the floor and 75% from the free throw line. 5.08 to play in the second. You know, if you're Cedar Falls, I think you continue to stay in that attack mode. Go after the defense. See if you can draw the contact and get them into a little bit more foul trouble as you get towards halftime. Boy, Finley, she's been able to go to baseline a ton today. And from both sides, yes. too. I mean, she's been going right hand, left, uh, left hand uh, along the baseline side. One out of two. Flip it over to Farnham. On the left side, Arnold. They've been laying off her just one three-pointer all season long. Drive from Taylor. Can't get it. Gets it back. Puts it up and in. Boy, good job staying after it. And a little collision afterwards. But... Uh, Maintained possession, went up strong. Didn't worry about who was underneath her feet. Knudsen drives, runner, too strong. Hannum with the offensive rebound. Back out, Knudsen for three, good. Another three-pointer by Knudsen. She continues to heat up. She's into double figures with a dozen. But you can see how valuable Hannum is. Went up there and rebounded in traffic. Got it right back out, found Knudsen. Arnold, top of the key, goes to Burridge. Swing it left side. It's Clark. Arnold again. Or Taylor. Taylor from the elbow. Tries to step through. Took some contact and a foul. There's a good footwork there, though. Keep that pivot foot and then go up. Hey, you try to give a little fake one way. Come back over the other shoulder. Duck under. Do whatever you can to shake that defense. And she did a good job keeping that pivot foot down and not traveling. On the season, Kira Taylor shooting 65.4% from the free throw line. Iron Unkind on the first, back into the game. The microwave, Sophie Stanick. <laughs> heating things up when she came in. Are back you going to let quarter. her know that you have named oh, her? Oh, absolutely. That? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> One more coming for Taylor. She's going to have to go Google it oh, all yeah, and no find clue, out right? who you're referencing. <laughs> A little bit for their time. Showed our age a little bit over here. 27-20 after the made free throw halfway through the second quarter. Oh, good defense there by Farnham. Ball still loose off the foot of Farnham. Tried to bump Stanick out there. Oh. Stanick will inbound. Farnham has uh, kind of turned things up a notch mm -hmm. here in the last couple of minutes. Knudsen takes it. Puts a dribble between the rings. Hands to Finley. Left side Stanick. Back to Finley up top. Hanks crosses over a dribble, now picks it up against pressure, down to 15 on the shot clock, hand him in the high post. For three, Finley, off the back iron, last touch by Knutson, it'll go to Davenport North. Seeing a good balance from Cedar Falls with the inside-outside game. We've seen the dribble drives, and then we've seen the perimeter game, and I don't think North has really gotten into a flow, a good flow offensively. I know they, they kind of read and react on their offense, but they're kind of standing around a little bit here in the latter part of the second quarter. Step into a three, Burridge, pure. Can't give her that much room. <laughs> or you just have her step up and knock down the three-pointer. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. You can't give her that much room because she saw it. She recognized it. Here's Finley looking to answer on the other end. Stanick in the corner. Crosses over, dribble, deflected, stolen away. The steal by Leibold. And here's Burridge again. Inside of three minutes left before halftime. Tricky dribbles on the right wing. Double team comes. For Arnold. Arnold will drive inside. Good pass underneath and the finish. Playmaker Arnold there. Yeah, great interior passing. Nice wrap around. And that's, uh, that's what they did so well in the first quarter. They were getting the good interior passing. 
Run here, looking for the answer. That one no good from Hanks, and it's tipped out. It'll go back to North. As they've run off five straight here. Burge sets the offense. She's in double figures with 11, playing with two fouls. Left side, Arnold. Hannum again just laying way off of her and just patrolling the middle. There's a drive from Burridge. Missed everything. Good defense out of Hanks. You know, once she gets by the initial wave of defense, there's going to be somebody right there waiting for her. Knutson on the other end comes up short. Taylor pushing end to end. Burridge on the left wing. Fired by Stanek. Looks inside. Good pass. Flipped it up. Can't get the roll from Leibold. Finley in the left corner, back to Knutson. She'll try a deep three. Front rim no, and Burridge with another rebound. Boy, Burridge is uh, doing a lot of great things on the glass, and she averaged almost nine rebounds a game. So she is somebody that's doing it on both ends, going to the glass, but also knocking down shots offensively. Arnold picks up her dribble, finds help with Taylor on the right wing. 12 on the shot clock, Burridge. Top of the key, behind the back, to Arnold on the left wing. Down to seven, dribbled off her foot for a moment, just chucks it up, too strong, and him with another rebound. Knudsen had it stolen away, Burridge with the steal. Arnold all alone, got it to go, we're tied. Yeah, Arnold was just kinda hanging back, saw the steal and then she got up big, she waved her hands and what a great pass from Burridge. Seven straight out of the Wildcats. Finley tries to answer with a three, no good. Barnum rebounds. She pushes end to end. All the way through, had to take it away. Knudsen with the steal. Knudsen, transition three, no good. Fight for the rebound. It's gonna stay with Cedar Falls. Last touch by Arnold. Now you get a chance to hold with shot clock resetting and 36 seconds left before halftime. 1.2 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. As back into the game, it'll be Clark for the Wildcats. Hanks looking, threw it away. Burridge with the steal and the run out and the finish. Burridge doing a little bit of everything. Nine straight from the Wildcats, they lead up by two. And a little panic on that inbound, just throwing it to nobody and Burridge took advantage of it. 29-27, Knudsen finds a double team. There's the runner, that one no good from Hanks. Hanks gets it back for a moment, jump ball, and possession arrow is gonna keep it with Cedar Falls. Just looking over at Burridge, she's uh, tugging on the shorts a little bit. I think she's a little winded and is going to welcome the halftime <laughs> buzzer. 9.5 seconds to go before we get to that. Cedar, Ball, Cedar Falls inbounds underneath their own rim. Hanks throws it back to Knudsen, now Finley. Left side, Knudsen, she'll try the three good. With the triple and gives Cedar Falls the lead. That's how the first half comes to a close. A nine nothing run gave Davenport North the lead. Knudsen with the three at the horn gives it back to Cedar Falls. A good one here in the Class 5A quarterfinals. 30-29 is our score, Laura, and uh, boy, back and forth. It really felt like Cedar Falls was gaining control, but big run by North at the end of the half. Yeah, a little game of runs. Both teams had their spurts right there in the second quarter, tried to get separation, but the other team would battle back, and so this is going to be a good one heading into the second half. We'll take a look at everything coming up here at the half and get ready for the second half of action. Also recap what we saw here earlier today. You're watching the Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network, powered by MidAmerican Energy. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Place for 
for you. Something exciting is growing on Iowa farms these days. Innovation. From tractors that seed, weed, and harvest with data-driven precision to drones that scout or plant cover crops to protect soil and water. Even our animals live in smart homes with round-the-clock care. Technology keeps your food safer, water cleaner, and makes us more sustainable. Because what we do here benefits everyone here. Life on the farm makes everyone's life better. Welcome back once again to Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines, as we are at the half. It's a one-point lead for Cedar Falls over Davenport North as the Norwalk dance team. Keeping the crowd entertained here at the half, and well, we don't need much entertainment because we got a good one in the first half, Laura. Yeah, we really do. It, uh, you know, coming in, you, we kind of thought that, you know, North down a player, Journey Houston, they might be a little shorthanded, but I'll tell you what, they are holding their own Cedar Falls as throwing a lot of things at them, showing them a lot of different defenses, but they have been up for the task, and they have been able to find ways to score and doing a great job of passing. Cedar Falls on the other side, nice balance, inside-outside scoring, and defensively, they're, they're doing a good job and trying to shut down Burridge, but she has been able to find the openings, and when she's shut down, she's finding her teammates. Yeah, she's done a great job on both sides of the floor, and she's got a pretty big coach watching her right now, Don Staley, uh, is here, the South Carolina coach, the All-American player, and a Hall of Famer, Don Staley. Yeah. You know, and sometimes if a player knows a coach like that is in the crowd, they tighten up a mm -hmm. little bit. Not Burridge, man. She's putting <laughs> yes. on a show, and I am really impressed with the way that she's playing. You and I both saw her a year ago, and her game has come a long way, and uh, she has really developed in a nice player. Now we'd like to take a moment and once again thank our title sponsor, Iowa Farm Bureau, for their support of the state basketball tournament. Earlier this week, the IGHSAU had the opportunity to speak with Iowa Farm Bureau President Brenton Johnson to learn more about Iowa Farm Bureau support of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union and student athletes across the state. Thanks for joining us for the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament. I'm Matt Hominoff with the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. We want to thank all of our partners for all the great support we get from around the state. None more important than our proud title sponsor, Iowa Farm Bureau. With me today is the president of the Iowa Farm Bureau, Brent Johnson. Thanks for joining us, Brent. Yep. Why does the Iowa Farm Bureau feel so strongly about supporting the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union and our tournament games? Well, Matt, the Iowa Farm Bureau has been the title sponsor for the Girls' Union now for 19 years. And once again, very proud to be a part of this year's state girls basketball tournament. And, you know, this tournament highlights the work ethic, teamwork, resilience, and dedication that these girls have contributed for a year's worth of dedication to their craft. And just like that same spirit, the Iowa farmers are the best in what they do across this entire country, not only in production, but also in conservation. And you put all that together, and there's a lot here to celebrate. Yeah. Your support for the IGHSAU goes beyond youth and education. What other support does the Iowa Farm Bureau provide Iowa's youth? Yeah. Well, Matt, here at Farm Bureau, we believe that today's youth is tomorrow's leaders, and we're proud to support them in many different ways. One of those is by our scholarship program. Every single year, we give nearly a half a million dollars across the entire state to those kids so that they can continue their education at a higher level. We've also partnered with the Girls' Union and the Boys' Association now for several years to offer concussion insurance for those student athletes who compete in sanctioned sports across the entire state so that they can do so at a high level and feel safe doing so. And, and that is at no cost to that student or their families. Third, to 
we've given teachers across the state nearly a half a million dollars so that they can properly equip their classrooms to do their jobs better. And most recently, just last year, the Iowa Farm Bureau gave the Iowa FFA Foundation a million dollars so that they can properly place ag teachers and ensure that students across the state have an exposure to agriculture and how it affects their lives every day. Yeah, so the students participating in this year's tournament are taking home some pretty neat souvenirs. But one new item that they're taking home are the championship ball caps. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely. You know, the the girls who are competing at this year's tournament are actually taking home quite a bit of swag this year. Of course, we have the bag tags and the signature basketballs that the girls have been used to seeing over the years. But this year, we've added a championship ball cap so that those girls who actually win the tournament have an extra souvenir to remember that if they put their minds to it, they can accomplish anything. Well, thanks again, Brent, for both your and everyone at Iowa Farm Bureau's support of the Iowa Girl over the years. In Iowa, we grow corn. A lot of corn. Corn is what supports us. It feeds our livestock, it fuels our vehicles, and powers our state. It nourishes our families. A cash crop? Yeah, but it's way more than that. Corn sustains us. It's who we are. Without it, we'd just be... Well, you get the picture. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. The thing I love about Clark is that you're never just one thing. I'm not just a student. I'm a future doctor. I'm an athlete on a history-making team. I'm a community member supporting the causes I care about. I'm a friend, a neighbor, a leader. At Clark, you can become anything. What will you be? Be you at CU. Back with you here at halftime from Wells Fargo Arena. A 30-29 lead for Cedar Falls over Davenport North at the half. Fans, official state tournament merchandise is now available online. Time to get your smartphones out. Just scan the QR code on your screen right now and visit IGHSAU.org to browse and customize your merchandise to match your style. Laura Leonard alongside myself, Trent Condon, back here courtside at Wells Fargo Arena, and well, I think I need to get some new gear. I mean, I, I got my old <laughs> polo here, but I, I got to get some pink going. We, yeah, we got to get me due. up to date. So you're I got due. my got my smartphone out. I got that QR code. I'm ready to go. <laughs> you're due. And while you're buying. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see I'm, how it I'm is. open for anything. All right. All right. <laughs> well, what a half we had there in the first half, and, and a little bit of everything, but I, I think we have to start with Burridge and her play in this one. We know about the offensive ability that she had, but it was more than just her as a scorer. Yeah, she did a great job. I'm really impressed with the way that she saw the floor and got her teammates the basketball in open spots. And, and that part, I, I didn't realize that she had that part of the game. I mean, I knew she could dish it off, and she was averaging a couple of assists a game, but her uncanny ability to see the players open and get them the ball with pinpoint passes is impressive. Taking a look at our Sue Cup stats here from the first half. Uh, a couple of things jump off the screen to you, Laura? You know, I, I think the uh, three-point shooting, Cedar Falls has taken a lot of them, but that's part of their game. That's what uh, they like to do. They like to get up and run. And, and I think offensive rebounds as well. Uh, Cedar Falls, five offensive boards. Not been able to do a whole lot with those. They've gotten six points off of those offensive boards. Neither team's really turning the basketball over. So that, that's been a clean game. Both these teams getting up and down the floor and not really turning it over. Cedar Falls got out to a nine-point lead, their biggest. Davenport North has led it by as many as three, but it has been back and forth in this one. Uh, Taking a look at some of the individual numbers, starting with Cedar Falls. Grace Knutson leading the way, 15 points, has hit three three-pointers, three of seven from behind the arc. Karis Finley second on the team with nine points in the first half. Sophie Stanek, the microwave, with four points off the bench, two points for Burks, and playing in the first half but not scoring were both Hanks and Hannum. On the other side for 
Davenport North. 13 points from Burridge, seven rebounds, three assists, a little bit of everything there. Seven points out of Kira Taylor, five from Farnham, including a big three-pointer. Arnold had four, and Clark McMath, who went left with that injury, and Leibold all played in the first half but did not score. Should be a fun one here in the second half, and it's a 2-7 matchup. Doesn't feel like that one. It's just a good one here. It is just a good one. And, you know, one other thing you want to talk about, Grace Hannum, six rebounds uh, in that first half and a couple of assists. Doesn't score a lot, but just does the little work that sometimes goes unnoticed. Have to know your role, certainly, and great to see both these teams. You know, Central Iowa, we're used to seeing big crowds. Johnston always has a huge crowd. Waukee Valley, but Davenport West, or excuse me, Davenport North with a Huge contingent of students probably hopping on some buses, carpooling, getting over here. Great to see. And, of course, Cedar Falls a couple hours away. Really nice crowd here today. Yeah, nice uh, nice opportunity for the fans to come and support their team. And, uh, and as they move on in the bracket, those crowds are going to get bigger and bigger. As we're ready for the start of second half. And we'll flip ends of the court. As now, right to left will be the number two seed, North. Arnold going to try a jumper right away. No, stick back is there, though. What a rebound and a finish by Farnham. Farnham's having quite a game. She provided a little spark in the second quarter, and uh, right out of the third quarter, she picks it up again for North. Finley on the drive, all alone, just a blow by there. Finley, she's got good speed off the dribble. Good, quick first step, too. Able to get around the defender, good handles, and get to the glass. Cedar Falls regains the lead, 32-31. Top of the key, it's Taylor. Holding. Now puts a dribble to it. And she will hand to Clark. Clark with the drive. And that's good. That's a tough move against a double team. Boy, really nice move. Nice little floater. Just floats it up over the top of the outstretched arms of the defense. Minute gone by, second half, back and forth we go, 33-32, North with the lead. Pull up from Knutson in pure. She is showing scored on all three levels. Yeah, and you know, she does such a good job of realizing when the defense gets there to shut her down, she has a quick ability to pull up and knock down the jumper. Arnold with the dribbles, Hannah again lays off of her, screen and roll, three from Burridge, good. Just waiting for that screen to be set. <laughs> Just kind of systematically sat there, waited for it to be set, and pulls up with the three. Three-pointer off the mark. Hannah with another rebound. Knudsen for three, too strong. Long rebound, tipped out of bounds, and it's going to go to north. And after that three from Burridge, she had the little three up there, letting everybody know, but a little smirk <laughs> on her face. Like, can't give me room, I told you. <laughs> 6.18 to play in the third quarter. North up to a two-point lead. 36-34, and it's Burridge again. Screen and roll with Arnold. Turns the corner, pulls up as the defense was there. Can't get the roll. Rebounded by Finley. So she's showing a little bit about how she can score at all three mm -hmm. levels as well. Three-point from beyond the arc, and then she has the dribble drive pull up. Been able to put it on the floor, take it all the way to the rim, but... You know, two really good basketball players on this floor in Knutson and in Burridge. Foul against Taylor. That is her third. She was saddled with foul trouble early in the first half as well. And Burridge over talking things over with her, saying, hey, we need you. Depth has already taken a hit. Obviously, the loss of Journey Houston, who is out for the season. In fact, going undergoing surgery today. And then the injury to McMath earlier in this one. 36-35 after the free throw. Farnham looks to the corner. Block shot from Hannum. Coming all the way out to block that one. Normally block shots in the paint. Had to come a long way to get a fingertip on that one. Offensive foul, screen and roll. And we'll turn it back over to North. I think Burks was the one that was trying to set that screen. Moved a little bit too much and got called for the foul. Yeah, they'll give you a little bit as like you're rolling back to the rim, but you can't make it aggressive. And that you, was case yeah, there. you can't be aggressive. You can move just a little bit, but uh, if you impede the progress of the defender, they're going to get you. Clark looks to the high post and Taylor. Taylor gets a triple team, barely gets it out there, but a reach and a foul. And afterwards, Burridge with another three. Just practicing. Oh, <laughs> she is good. <laughs> Well, you talk about 
from where we saw, you mentioned this earlier, what we saw a season ago. That's what a full season of work can do for you, and Burridge definitely has put in the work. Yeah, and that's a great example of, uh, you know, yeah, you can do a lot of things to improve your game in the off season. You can work, you can get in the gym, you can shoot, you can work on your ball handling. There's just a lot of things. Rather than just playing games, mm -hmm. go work on your game. Good answer there from Arnold as they've been laying off her, and she just went up and bodied up Hannah in the paint and finished with the bucket. There's a three from Knutson again. Anything you can do, I can do better. Her and Burridge playing back and forth. Yeah, again, just to get in a screen out there on the wing, just a little crossover dribble, pulls up and knocks it down. Deadlocked at 38. In the paint, swatted away by Hannum. Now the run out. Hanks trying to beat everybody up. The floor goes up and a foul. Look out. Ooh, boy, dangerous down there. Another player goes to the floor. That is Burks for Cedar Falls. Wasn't sure, was that Clark that went down Clark. there? Yeah, she picked up the foul. She's holding her hand, but it's like her head she was went, really close to one of those camera people down yeah, there. Yeah, went almost right into the standard of the uh, basketball hoop. Training staff for Davenport North wanted to come and make sure. She's looking at her right hand, it looks like she's holding there. And Clark, one of their better three-point shooters. She's got 23 of them. First free throw good from Gabby Hanks. 56% free throw shooter. Get a good look at it here. The contact up top. And she went in hard. Ooh. Hopefully she can. She's still working on that right hand. They're going to need her down the stretch here. Perfect pair for Gabby Hanks. That's a two-point Cedar Falls lead, 40-38. 4.35 left, trying to turn the corner. They got Finley getting that leg out a little bit, trying to slow her down. First against Finley, and that's the third team foul. Change this year at the high school level, five team fouls now in each quarter. Gone are the days of the one and one after seven. You like the change of the 30-second uh, shot clock? Yes. And uh, I like the change of the fouls as yeah. well. I, I like both of those changes, uh, the shot clock and the change of you're not going to the one-and-one. One. You get five fouls each quarter, go to the two shots, erase it at the end of the quarter, start all over again. I yep. think most coaches have liked that change. Simplifies things a lot, makes it a little bit different, more difficult, though, for a comeback, trying to get teams to the line on that one-and-one. One in the fourth quarter. Oh, look at that finish in the paint. Taylor, that is a tough move. That is a really tough move. Had to split two defenders. Looking to answer on the other end, no good. Offensive rebound though, taken away. Burridge with the steal. Two on four, pulls up from 16, left it short, and rebounded by Stanek. And timeout on the official. Oh, it looks like Karis Finley holding her back. Man, this is mass unit out there. Injuries all over the place. Yeah, it's getting physical here in the third quarter. It's just so, you know, it's such a tight game. They're scrapping for every loose ball. And you're going to, you know, these are things that if it's not a really bad injury, you got to kind of suck it up and say, let's go, let's play. We're playing for a state title here. Winner will play on Thursday in the Class 5A semifinal. Back cut, there's Finley. Bad back don't matter, she finishes with the bucket. Yeah, she seems to be fine, moving really well. Got a nice backdoor cut. She's got 14 second on the team in scoring now. Gives Cedar Falls the lead back with 323 left in the third quarter. Burridge drops it back, here's a three, good again. Michaela Farna heating up. 33% on the season from three-point range. She has looked really good here today. Finley with the blow by, but can't get the layup, and then taken away by Taylor. Deflected, ball loose, and we're going to get a bump and a foul. Ooh, they got Arnold on that one. I thought that was 60-40 the other way, but doesn't go the way of North. Yeah, that... Uh... Not so sure about that one, but that's how they call it, and uh, you have to put that one behind you and get up and play a little defense now if you're north. 
Coach Greg Groren of Cedar Falls. Just saw him a moment ago. He'll take that. A lot of success. And, boy, this Cedar Falls program, the way that they have developed throughout the years, he's had some great talent come through. Yeah, he has. And uh, 10 seasons, he's been there, seventh team. This team is the seventh team he's brought to the state tournament. So had a lot of success. Build a really nice tradition there at Cedar Falls. Oh, a back cut before the shot. They're going to wave it off. Official was right there with it. He had the call right away. Said that was on the floor. The foul happened before the shot got up. Cedar Falls fans behind us, not real pleased with it. Mentioned uh, Finley, she was holding her back. She's also got blood coming down her knee. She's got a skid knee, bad back. Thought she was going to get a three-point play. She didn't even get that. <laughs> Add, adding insult to the injury. <laughs> Yeah, normally, uh, yeah, you're right. She's got that blood. Normally, to get her out of there and get her uh, cleaned up a little bit, but nobody apparently has noticed it. Full timeout. We'll take it with them here in the third quarter. North of 43, 42 lead over Cedar Falls. You're watching Girls State Basketball presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network, powered by MidAmerican Energy. At MidAmerican Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. You have a farm... Trent Condon, Laura Leonard back with you as we play in the third quarter of this Class 5A quarterfinal. Davenport North, the number two seed, leading seven seed at Cedar Falls by a single point. Nice crowd on hand, having a good time and watching a great basketball game. Yeah, it really has been a good basketball game and both teams, as we talked about in the first half, have had their runs. Nobody's really had a run yet here in the third quarter to try to pull away. Cedar Falls will inbound. And a back cut as they get it into Hanks. Hanks, the smallest player out there out of the regulars. We also see off the bench Stanek, but have an opportunity here. And she'll step to the line for a pair. Really like that setup on the inbound play, the baseline out of bounds. All four players broke towards the center court line, and then Hanks broke back to the bucket, got a nice bounce pass. See the good pass inside and the contact from Clark. Clark thought she had it clean, didn't get the call, two for two and four consecutive now out of Hanks at the free throw line. Gives Cedar Falls the lead back, 44-43. Inside of three minutes left in the third quarter. Barnum looks into the corner for Taylor. Taylor, a couple of dribbles, had it deflected away Called a little bit tighter here in the third quarter. Talked yeah. about that physicality that we've seen, trying to slow that down. I think trying to, to slow that down a little bit. But now if you're north, you got to adjust to that too. You can't afford to get into foul trouble. As Bridge will inbound, fresh shot clock with 35. Gets it out for Taylor. Taylor into the paint, walked with it, drug that pivot foot. Turnover is going to give it back to Cedar Falls. I was watching Burridge on that. She inbounded the ball. A lot of times if you're the trigger person, you get yourself into position to score so you can get the return pass. She came in and was trying to set a screen, telling her teammate, come on, I've got the screen for you, and they didn't react. She's been a great team player. Back cut, Hannum all alone, and finishes Grace Hannum with the bucket. Boy, good patience on that play. Got a nice little screen, and Hannum able to roll right to the hoop. Three-point lead for Cedar Falls. They go to Burridge on the right wing. Works the dribble, double team comes, taken away. Finley with the steal. Ahead to Knutson. Knutson, end-to-end, -end. fakes, drops it back. Finley for three, in and out. Burridge high for the rebound. She pushes quickly to the other end, finds Farnham. Push it a foul, offensive foul. That will be number three now against Burridge. Finley playing with a bad back, a cut up knee and takes the charge. That couldn't feel good either. Not at all, but she stood in and took the charge and Burridge saw her come and just could not hold up. The momentum was 
too much that she couldn't sidestep the defender. 46-43 lead for Cedar Falls. Back cut again, Finley again. She has found that backboard incredibly well. They've overloaded that left side of the floor and letting her go back door. She knows that she can get a step on Farnham. She is going to get a good pass. 16 now for Finley as the lead grows to five. And Cedar Falls has gone to a zone last couple of times down the floor. They're in zone and I think that is confusing North right now. Off the bench, Coach Rucker talking to uh, Michaela Farnham there. Make sure with it, get that dribble down before you get the feet going. North now going to his zone. On the left wing, Knutson fires, no. Hand him over there in Farnham. And jump ball is the call. It'll stay on the Cedar Falls end. Not many times you see Knutson with an open look like that, though, and missing. No, not at all. And, and just as you said, they went into a zone, and she got the ball in her hands. I thought, oh, this could be trouble for North, because if they're going to play that zone to protect against foul trouble, that's going to open up the door for Knutson. Timeout on the floor. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. The Iowa Bankers Association is the proud sponsor of the Parade of Champions and the Iowa Student Achievement Award. 48-43, another reason for maybe the change defensively, that third foul, just you have to protect Burridge at all costs. You have to, and you can't afford to have her out of ball game, or you can't even ha afford to have her get that fourth foul either. So you see them go into that zone. Maybe she can't be as aggressive, but her teammates can be aggressive in and out of that zone. Burridge has been outstanding on the other side. It's been two players offensively, Knudsen, Talked about her at all levels, but Karis Finley, I mean, those back cuts have been there, but she's also been able to do it off the bounce. Really talented sophomore. Yeah, she looks uh, really good, and they've seen a little bit of a flaw, and I think that's the other reason that, that maybe North went to that zone because of those back cuts that they ran against them a couple of times. Cedar Falls went inbound with the fresh shot clock. Again, it's Finley. No, Hannum with the rebound. She goes up and one. Grace Hannum with the finish and a chance at the three-point play. She has the height inside, and I love the power dribble to get a little space. Yeah, and she went up in traffic, pulled that down, and she just kind of turned around. The rest of her teammates are in a frenzy after she knocks down that shot. Can't get the free throw, long rebound into the hands of Taylor. Davenport North needs a response here, down by seven. Arnold on the right wing. For Leibold, left side. And return to Burridge. And they switch back now. Looks like they're in a little man-to-man. -man. Really taken away, Clark. Tough catch. Leibold, guarded by Hanks. Drives in, pulls up. Back for Arnold with the drive. Left hand, no, but a foul. And she's going to get two free throws. You can see she's uncomfortable out there on the perimeter, but... She does get a good head of steam. She can do some things in the post. Yeah, they are sagging off of her, daring her to shoot that perimeter jump shot, and she doesn't want to do that. She wants to put it on the floor and get inside. 60% free throw shooter makes another, and one more coming her way. She's 100% from the three-point line. One of one. <laughs> hey, that's all right. <laughs> you can always tell people, oh, yeah, it was perfect for yeah. the three-point line. Nobody ever, nobody ever asks you, how many did you take? That's right. Set a record. <laughs> nobody can ever break that one. <laughs> one out of two in an offensive rebound for Taylor. Another possession for North. Taylor all the way through, high with the left hand. Gets it back. Arnold kept it alive, and we're going to get another foul underneath. It'll be team foul in the double bonus now. Cedar Falls with five, so back to the free throw line goes North and Taylor. Taylor 65.4% from the free throw line this season. She'll toe the line for a pair. First one left short. Trying to get back in the game, free throw is important. It is, you gotta knock them down from here on out. I mean, you have to knock them down anytime, but uh, you really wanna knock them down when you're at crunch time. Rattles home the second, five point game, 50-45. With 32 seconds left in the third quarter. Seven points now for Arnold.
Stanek for Knutson. Down to 20, they go into the post and Burks. Threw it back to Knutson and that's gonna be an over and back violation. We'll give it back to North. Trying to hold for the final shot. Those are turnovers that will Oh, make it Coach Gray. I know, and it's just, uh, you know, when you're two teams that play up-tempo and try to score at a, a fairly quick pace, when you slow it down and wait for that uh, 30 seconds or 25 seconds, whatever it might be, before the end of the quarter, sometimes you turn it over. Burge pounds the dribble between the rings. To the left wing, Clark, back for Burge, three. Hoist from 28 feet, good! <laughs> Divine Burridge, the triple at the horn. And it's a two-point game as we go into the fourth quarter. Cedar Falls 50, Davenport North 48. We come back with the fourth quarter. You're watching Girls State Basketball presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network powered by Mid-American Energy. At Mid-American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Um, um, Frank, Frank, when you think fairway, you think fresh. Is that the winning culture you've tried to create? Penelope Pineapple, what an unbelievable produce performance. How does your team stay so fresh? Sunkissed Orange, is it true fairway has offered the freshest produce in town since 1938? What can we say? Our produce is so fresh, we're speechless. Start of the fourth quarter from Wells Fargo Arena. Trent Kind and Laura Leonard back with you. A two-point game. Cedar Falls with the lead over Davenport North. North will get the ball to begin the fourth quarter. They go to the high post in. Burridge hit the 28-footer at the buzzer. Get it back to a three-point lead. Hanks with the deflection. It'll stay with North. 21 on the shot clock. Burridge now... Up to 19 points in this one. Three players and double figures for North. Kadutzen leads all scores with 20. Along with Finley with 16. Taylor gets it in the high post. Couple of dribbles for Farnham. Farnham scoops it up with the left hand and in. Euro step with the left hand. <laughs> Telling you what, Farnham showing her versatility. She's knocked down some big threes, but this time puts it on the floor and a nice step around the defense. Inside, looking for Hannum, going to stay here off of Farnham. We saw in the first half, Cedar Falls had a nine-point lead. North came back, same thing in the third quarter. Good comeback, and now tied up at 50. Inside, here's Fitley, no, but a foul, and she'll go to the line. Cedar Falls has done a really good job with those baseline out-of-bounds plays. They've been able to score off of them, or they've been able to get to the free-throw line. Two free throws for Finley, 70.9% at the line this season. Rocks in the first and one more coming your way. Back into the game for Davenport North is Gabby Leibold. Substitutions brought to you by IMT Insurance. Learn how you can be worry-free with IMT at imtins.com. One out of two and we're gonna get a foul. Burge is jumping through there, Burridge. Contact in the first foul of the fourth quarter, whistled against Cedar Falls, one on each side. Burks, I think, is going to pick that one up as Burge tried to sneak to the inside of her to get that rebound. Davenport North now 6 of 11 from behind the three-point line. And Burridge, a big part of that as she brings it across the timeline for the Wildcats out of Davenport. Cross court, Arnold. Clark in the left corner. Works the dribble, goes to Burridge. Burridge steps through, back for Arnold. 
Now Burridge in the post, double team. Farnham for three, had it blocked. Hannum with the rebound to Knutson. Knutson double dribble. Got that hand there, thought maybe she was gonna get away with it, but the official right there, good call. And that's what you have to do, you get that hand and you just keep playing yep. through it, hoping the <laughs> official does not see you. She so, knew it, but she thought, she thought maybe I can get away with it. Little smile on her face as she comes back to the other side. Cedar Falls by a point, 51-50. Burridge on the left wing. Double team comes again for Clark. Clark to Arnold, right wing. Finley comes all the way out against Arnold. Keep the pressure on her. Now Burridge right wing, guarded by Knudsen. Tries baseline, pulls up, contact, and a foul. They're going to get Hannum with the reach, and on Hannum, that will be her second foul. You know, they've slowed the pace down a little bit, North has. They've been just very deliberate on the offensive end, letting that clock wind down, getting the ball in the hands of Burridge, and she did get around Knutson, got that backside help of Hannum, and, you know, if Hannum would have gone vertical, she might have gotten the block, but instead she swatted at it and picks up the foul. First free throw short, short from Burridge, the leading free throw shooter on the team at 74%. Knocks home the second, we're tied again, 51. Stanek had it come through her hands, out of bounds. And turnover right back to North. 6.08 to play, tie ball game, fourth quarter in this Class 5A quarterfinal on the Girls Union Network. You know, those unforced turnovers in the fourth quarter, those are the ones that you remember that uh, come back to haunt you. Burge. Double team comes her way, cross court. Farnham for three. That one well short. Burridge with the rebound, and the stick back is there. Burridge with 20. And the lead is two for the Wildcats. And I think Burridge now has a double-double. 22 points after that one. In and out. Looked like it was going in and then out again for Knudsen. Farnham pushing, throwing it up and in. Farnham. She has been a great compliment here today. Yeah, she really has. Uh, she has had a nice game, and when they've needed a big bucket, she has found it. Knudsen on the left wing, timeout. Coach Groen wants to talk things over as North has built the lead up to four, their biggest of the game, 55-51. It's a full timeout. You're watching the Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network, powered by Mid-American Energy. At American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. 5.15 to play in the fourth quarter. Davenport North, a 55-51 lead over Cedar Falls. It's been a whole lot of divine burrage, but how about the play of Michaela Farnham for the Wildcats? Yeah, Farnham really uh, has done a nice job. She's known as a three-point shooter, 33% from beyond the arc, but she's shown her versatility here in this ball game by putting the ball on the floor. She's gotten inside. She's hit a couple of mid-range jumpers and she's gotten some big rebounds as well. Cedar Falls looking for a response now, a spot they haven't been on a whole lot. Trailed early in the ball game but they've been able to keep North at arm's reach away through most of this one. North has been able to respond every time, now down by four. Here's Knutson for three, good. Got just what they wanted out of the timeout. Started over on the left side of the floor, snuck her across on the baseline side, got her set up over on the right side brought the ball around and got the ball in her hands. One point game, Clark will try to answer with three, left it short, long rebound to Knudsen. Knudsen now pushing forward. She's got numbers three on two. Transition three, good again. Knudsen back to back threes, Cedar Falls regains the lead. And that they're not afraid to do that. When they're out in transition, they will pull up and knock down those big three pointers. 
57-55. Six straight from Knudsen. Leibold drives into the lane. Lissa back, Farnham. Farnham puts it on the deck and shuffled her feet. Trying to get it up there before the travel. Yeah, ran her off the three-point line, too. They got out, made her put it on the floor. Turnover back to Cedar Falls. 4.15 left in the fourth quarter. Cedar Falls with three timeouts remaining. Two for Davenport North. Ben Hootson, back-to-back three-pointers the last two possessions. Stanek with it on the left wing. Couple of dribbles to Knutson. Knutson with 26 and then a bump. Don't want those. No, you don't want those. And you could see Clark was just inching, inching. She thought she was going to be able to step in the passing lane and get a quick steal. Four of 13 now from behind the three-point arc for Grace Knutson. Halfway through the fourth quarter. On the lob, they find Hannum underneath and the finish. Great feed by Knudsen. Hannum went right up with it. Yeah, snuck in behind the defense and then got a back screen from Finlay. Eight straight from Cedar Falls. Clark in the left corner for Hannum. She'll try the three. Got the roll. Wow. Used all of it. Needed it all. Wow, and that was a quick release. She got the ball up and let it go. Finley tries to do... The same on the other end, but no good. Rebounded by Taylor. Burridge for Farnham. Farnum drives. Double team comes. Threw it back. Deflected out of bounds by Finley. It'll stay with Davenport North. 3.16 left in the fourth quarter. Cedar Falls leads by a point. Farnham with 17 now. now Farnham with the game that she's having is kind of taking some of the pressure off of Burridge. Going to have to defend against these two players instead of just focusing in on Burridge. Get the shot clock reset, it had gone back to 35. They put 27 on the clock, and we're back ready for live action. One point game in the fourth quarter. Farnham for three again, that one well short. Stick back is there though, hustle play out of Taylor. Taylor on the weak side, got that ball right where she wanted, went up between two defenders. Hanks on the right wing. Dribbles inside. The runner, hoop in the harm, count it, and a chance at a three-point play. They're gonna get the foul on Taylor. That will be her fifth. Boy, she was there in time, too. Yeah, it looked like she had gotten over and set her feet, and she's very disappointed in that call, and not being able to finish out this last minute, two minutes, 52 seconds. A senior free throw, no good, but the bucket counted as Cedar Falls leads 61-60. 2.45 left, Burridge. Bounds a right-handed dribble for Farnham. Another three, well short again, deflected into the hands of Knudsen. Knudsen, making sure nobody was behind her there. She gets it on the right wing. Inside, Hannah with the right hand and the finish. And boy, not having Taylor in there impactful. Yeah, and Arnold just got caught up, uh, turned her head, got going the wrong way, and that allowed Hannah to be able to come in from behind. Farnham gets double teamed. Goes for Arnold. Arnold with the dribble, looks to the corner. The three, libeled no. Farnham goes up, fouled, and it'll be two free throws. Michaela Farnham is leaving everything on the floor. Yeah, and she's 73% from the line and doing a good job crashing from the weak side. They are starting to rely on threes a little bit more here and still think that they could get that ball, you know, get inside, put it on the floor, shoot that mid-range jumper instead of settling and standing out on the perimeter for the three-point shot. Second free throw on its way. It is good. One out of two at a two-point game. 63-61 as we tick inside of two minutes left here in regulation. Stanek on the left wing. Gets it for Hannah at the top of the key. Hannah returns to Finley. Knudsen on the right wing. Had it deflected and stolen away. The run out by Burridge all alone. Finishes. 
Switched hands in the air, thought she was going to get caught under the rim. Tie ball game at 63. Again, the quick hands, just not taking care of the basketball, and Burridge took advantage of it. Finley between the rings to Knudsen. For three, good! Boy, she's cool. Cool <laughs> as a cucumber. Just needs a little space, squeeze off the shot. It's a three-point lead for Cedar Falls. 66-63 with 72 seconds left here in regulation. Farnham with the drive, goes up. Can't get the roll, gets the offensive rebound. The stick back is there. But Kayla Farnham makes what, it a one point game. What an effort as Farnham takes the baseline and then missed it, stayed after it, got the put back. She is having one heck of a game. 66-65, Cedar Falls with the lead, 57 seconds to go. We'll be back in 30 seconds. This is state tournament basketball presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network powered by Mid-American Energy. Mid-American Energy, we're one company serving 1.6 million people who all need energy that's available 24-7. That's why we work 24-7. That's why we make investments in our systems that make us more resilient to extreme weather. That's why we generate power from all available resources to cover the variables in supply and demand. And that's why when the power is knocked out, we work around the clock to restore power to you. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Cedar Falls, a 66-65 lead over second seed at Davenport North in this Class 5A quarterfinal. Trent Condon, Laura Leonard back with you at Wells Fargo Arena. Great afternoon of basketball here at the well. And this one, we couldn't hope for anything better, I don't think, Laura. No, this has been a really good one. And, uh, you know, the game before us was a Titan contest as well uh, between... Centennial and Waukee, and so two good back-to-back -back games here at the state tournament. Both teams do still have a foul to give, three on each side, two timeouts remaining each, also on each side as Knudsen takes the inbound. Clock starts with 57 on it. They go to Hanks, Finley into the corner, Knudsen three again, why not? 32 for Knudsen. A four-point lead. Leibold and a reach and a foul. Don't want to stop the clock on a foul. And it's twice out of the timeout that Cedar Falls has been able to run Knutson on the baseline, get her open in the corners for that three-point shot. The monster performance continues for Knutson. Eight of 15 from behind the arc. Clark on the left wing. Looks for Burridge. 30 to play. And a bump. No, stepped on the end line. Turnover is going to give it back. You got to get up in pressure if you're north. Try to force a turnover. Four fouls also against Clark. Got to try to get the ball back. Looking for a 10 second call. Knutson able to beat it forward though, and there's a reach and a foul as they'll get Farnham. And putting Knutson at the free throw line. Well, such a good free throw shooting team. Knutson at 76%. Finley 71%. Burks is 81%. And now one more foul to give before you put him on the line. Hanks will inbound. Gets it in to Knutson. And there's the foul. That'll be the fourth foul now whistled against Divine Burridge. Burridge with 24 points. Well, and what about the, the shots of Knutson down the stretch? Two big three-pointers. 33 now in the game. An efficient day on the floor. And the two free throws. Puts a lead at six, timeout on the floor. We'll stay right here. Cedar Falls, a 71-65 lead. Davenport North obviously needs to make it quick, but you got three-point shooters. You got to keep it with the hands of Burridge. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, you got to get it down quickly. You got to score right away. 
You've got a couple of timeouts left, so if you're efficient in the way you score, foul, and then hope that you can, they miss the free throws, and you can come down and, and uh, make another bucket. Be interesting, too, to see what Cedar Falls does here. Do they put Hannum back in the game? Great rebounder, one of the tops in the state, but just a 40% foul shooter. If there is a missed shot, you know, they're going to be hacking her right away. Right, yeah, I know. It's one of those do, do we or don't we, and, and do you need the defense, and do you want to pull the rebound? I think that you probably do. You probably get her back in, into the lineup and get her in there to be the rim protector mm -hmm. as well as the rebounder and then get it out of your hands as quick as possible once you pull the rebound, get that outlet pass. 16.8 seconds remaining, six point game. North will have to run it from the far end of the floor. Cedar Falls is gonna show a little soft pressure too, trying to take as much time off as possible. Bridge will inbound here, likely gonna give it right back to her. As Clark does take the inbound, here's Bridge. She'll get ahead of steam, guarded by Finley. Drops it back to Clark. Got to hurry. Clock running down to eight. Step through Farnham. Off the front rim, no good. Foul, and it will be Hannum going to the free throw line, but North needed to get that shot down. Yeah, they needed to get that bucket, and I'm kind of surprised Burridge didn't just come down. They didn't get a screen for her up top so she could come off the bounce and maybe try to pull the trigger on a three. Very unselfish play, though, overall throughout this one for Burridge. Hannum will step up to the free throw line. Hannum with eight points came in averaging just 3.9 per contest. She's been good. Yeah, she's, uh, she's done a really good job of handling the middle, blocking a couple of shots today, pulling down some rebounds, just doing the dirty work. And 12 rebounds in the game for Grace Hannum. Can't get the free throw with three seconds left and that'll do it. As North will dribble out the clock, Cedar Falls, the number seven seed, advances to the state semifinals as they will play at 11.45 on Thursday morning against the next matchup between Dowling Catholic and Pleasant Valley. Impressive here, I think, on both sides. The seven seed gets the win as they'll advance on, but walked away incredibly impressed by this North squad. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it was going to be an uphill climb. You're without... Uh, one of your other players in Journey Houston who averages 19 points a game. You lose her after 17 games into the season. Still won a lot of ball games, adjusted to that, but you knew you were going up against a tough Cedar Falls team and it was gonna be a tough hill to climb, but they hung in there. A lot of Grace Knutson in the fourth quarter and every time they needed a big shot, seemed like she came up with it. And she did and didn't even see, I mean, she was so calm about it, knew the ball was coming to her. She rose up and knocked down a couple of big threes. We're gonna send it over to the PA right now for the awards presentation. Sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Presenting awards from the IGHSAU, our executive director, Gene Berger, and basketball administrator, Gary Ross. Congratulations, head coach Paul Rucker, and the Wildcats from De Davenport North on an outstanding basketball season. And now Grace Knudsen will advance her team to the next round on the official bracket at center court. Cedar Falls fans, your team advances to the 5A semifinals and will play the winner of Pleasant Valley and Dowling Catholic on Thursday at 11.45. Cedar Falls Tigers advance on to the state semifinals with the victory here today. Just a well-played ball game. We talked about Caduce and what she did. I thought Finley was outstanding on the other side. Divine Burridge, still another year. She's just a junior, but in her final game, Mikayla Farnham in a Wildcat uniform. Great performance out of her. Oh, absolutely. She did everything she could possibly do to try to keep her team in this ball game and uh, really strong down the stretch. And Burridge, you're right, very impressive uh, what she did this season carrying this team to the state tournament after the injury. We'll see uh, Coach Staley just to the right of us if maybe there's a scholarship offer waiting for Divine Burridge after this one. That was an impressive performance 
out of her even in a losing effort. Cedar Falls will advance on. They will get the winner of Downlink Catholic and Pleasant Valley in this Cedar Falls team. They got all the pieces, don't they? Uh, they really do. I, you know, they've got the inside game. They've got the outside game. Got the perimeter shooting. I, and defensively, they're pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. They're pretty salty. Going to be a fun one. We got more basketball coming up here on the network in our final quarterfinal in Class 5A coming up next. On behalf of our color analyst, Laura Leonard, our producer, Justin, and all of us here in Des Moines. I'm Trent Condon, and thank you for watching our live coverage of the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament presented by Iowa Farm Bureau on the Girls Union Network, powered by Mid-American Energy.